What I'd like to do is show you how a four stroke animation was created, or part of that was created, using initially an Illustrator diagram and then converted to Adobe Animate where we animate it. So let's have a look at Adobe Animate so you can see what the animation actually looks like. So the animation is fairly slow, fairly basic. It's only part of the animation so far. We do have to do something with these valves and move those up and down in the right spot. First of all, it's just to show you how we got the pieces together and how this was put together to create this animation. It's not 100% smooth, but it is enough to give the example and show what it's actually doing and it was fairly quick to, to create and put together. So let's look at Illustrator first. In Illustrator we made sure that everything was separate. So if you look at the layers you can see here that the piston layer was its own object on a layer with all the pieces still underneath that so we can do other things with those pieces and modify them. First probably really important thing is everything is done as a vector. There's no actual photos involved in this and that makes it much easier obviously to put that into Adobe Animate and be able to animate things and move things around exactly where we need them. So we have the piston, uh, we have the connecting rod which again is an object of its own and then the camshaft or the part that goes around that that actually connects to the rod again is an object of its own because that's the bit that's going to rotate so it's going to spin around like so uh, once we go and do the animation. So the tricky bit is making sure that the rod that's connected here stays connected to the piston but also rotates around with this edge and I'm going to show you a really simple way to do it. There are more complex ways that can make it more accurate. At least I'll show you one way of doing that. What we then did was save this as an Illustrator file and then import that Illustrator file into Adobe Animate. Inside Adobe Animate, first of all, if we go right back to frame one, all we did was grab all of these objects. Now I moved it down so that it was pointing straight down. So it's just a little bit easier to get started with creating all the animation. And the first thing to do was to select the camshaft and we're going to make sure that rotates. I chose 180 frames to put this into because it's a half of 360 which meant I just had to halve everything to make sure the rotations worked and the positions of everything it was just halved from 360. I could have done 360 as well. That may have been easier but I didn't. So this is what I did for this one. So I've selected that object which is on layer 8 and all I had to do then was go to the very end of that and add a keyframe for that layer and then in over in orientation or rotate I just chose clockwise and all that did was rotate that 360 degrees for me so it just just rotates all the way around so when I move that through the timeline you can see it rotating. Now one important thing that I had to do with that rotation was make sure that the center of this object and this the center of this whole object was actually in the middle so that when this object rotated it was rotating around a center point. So that's why I put these guides in that sit right there. So they're sitting in the center to make sure that when I did choose that rotation it was going to rotate around that center point. It also gave me a guide to make sure the piston stayed lined up when I moved the piston up and down and added that in. So all I had to do then was just right click and choose add a motion tween. In this case it was just a classic motion tween. And all I had to do was put that in and it automatically did the rotation 360 degrees around that center point. So the next tricky bit was to make sure the piston moved up and down. Because I had it right at the bottom at the lowest point that it's ever going to be, all I had to do here was go, in my case I went all the way to 90 because I've got 180 degrees, 90 is halfway. Uh, moved it up to the top where it has to be, added a motion tween. Uh, for the going up and then another motion tween for the process of going back down again. So then to, by doing that and keeping it straight all I had to do then was just move, uh, move along the timeline and you'll see that it moves up and down. So that part was really simple. The connecting rod was the same thing. I went to the center point for the connecting rod. I moved it up until it sat in the right spot in relation to uh, both camshaft and the piston so as long as it lined up center wise that's where I wanted it and I made sure it was uh, at 90 out of our 180 so it was halfway and that kept it in line so that way it stayed uh, directly in line center wise and position wise it moved to exactly the same the same spot or the spot that we wanted in line with the piston. I'm going to show you how I did a simple version of the connecting rod so the connecting rod is set up with uh, just on the timeline right to the end there so it's still the same connecting rod it's now not moving at all so 
I've just cut that back for you so you can have a look. I've added the center by using this center tool over on the left. I've made sure the center is at the top. So now when I do go and rotate this, it will rotate on that point there, which is what we wanted it to do. So that bit's fine, but now I need to make it vertically line up or keep moving with the piston. So if I go all the way to 90, so we've got uh, 180 frames. If I go back to 90, just here. So I'm just going to insert keyframe. And I'm going to move this vertically all the way up so the center lines up with the center. So those two centers line up. So now it's just jumping straight up to there. And then when I go back to the very last one, up here, I'll just insert another keyframe. And I'll move it all the way back down, back down to where it started from. So that's centered just there. And now I've got it jumping up to the top, back to the start. Now, if I right click and create a motion tween in here, and I right click in this one and create another classic motion tween, what you'll see now is that. As I move this across the timeline, you'll see that it's moving in the position with the piston. So it's just going up to the top and that's where it stops. And then it goes back down again, gets to the bottom and it's now stopped at the bottom. So that part is OK. But what's not happening, as you can see, is that it's not moving to the left. So if I go to, say, halfway in between, say 45, Go to 45 frames and I insert a keyframe just here. And this time, all I have to do is do the rotation. Now you'll notice that it hasn't actually lined up correctly. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, one is that the motion of the camshaft spinning a connecting rod isn't actually even all the way around in terms of where this position is going to be. So it's slower at the bottom, faster in the middle, and then slows down when it gets to the top. Um, that's just the way the mechanics work. We're just doing this close at the moment to give you an idea on how we can piece that together and make it work. If I have a look at this now, you'll see that it's rotating to the left. And when I get to this part here, that should be roughly in the center. And when I say roughly in the center, this part here, that little bar should be roughly in the center of, um, or that left hand edge should be in the center of our connecting rod. Now, if I go all the way across here to 90, that's fine. So halfway between 90 and 45 will be 135. So if I jump to frame 135, insert another keyframe in here. Just go insert keyframe. This time I rotate it out to the right hand side. And you can see now that it's starting to, to fit together. It certainly doesn't look nice and even and smooth, but you can start to get the idea of how this process is going to work. So because that's not nice and smooth and spinning yet, I'm just going to divide each one in half for the connecting rod and position it a little bit better each time. So instead of 45, we'll go to say frame 22 and we'll insert another keyframe. I'll just zoom in and rotate this around a bit. So I want to make sure that that still lines up. It looks like it's covering the right spot. So that's still about right there. Anything, it's probably got to go a little bit further. So I'll just go roughly halfway between again. And here you should do, insert a keyframe. And again, I just need to rotate this so it sits out where it should be. And you can mathematically work all of this out too if you like, that's quite okay. Insert another keyframe. Just bring this out a bit further so it works better. And then one more in here. Insert keyframe. And this one actually was pretty close anyway. So let's have a little look at what we've got now and see where the problem is or problems. So if we rotate that through, you can see that's okay, but it's a little bit out in terms of it not positioning exactly where we want it to be. So if I would like to go back and move that around a bit, 
and we're talking about doing it manually, not doing the mathematics of making it exactly right. But say for this position here, I decide I want to move this uh, connecting rod down a little bit so that it sits um, over the camshaft's edge to where it's supposed to be. Because as you can see, it's out by quite a bit. I would need to make sure that I also move the piston down with it. So I have to go and choose the piston and I would have to put in a keyframe there as well. So they've actually got both and then both together I can just move them down making sure they stay vertical but just move them down a little bit so they line up better. And you'll see now that that means as it goes around it's now sitting left and right in the right spot. So it's positioned much better. I need to do the same over on this side here. So I need to insert a keyframe. Now select both objects and then just move it down a little bit. Because like I said, it isn't quite even uh, with the way it's going to rotate. And let's just have a look at what we've got now. So it's still definitely not perfect and you could put more into that as well if you needed to, but you can see that uh, other than the spark plug moving up and down at the top, which I do need to fix because that shouldn't actually do that, we now have the piston moving up and down and the rest of the mechanics sort of working in a way that's it's smooth, or smooth enough uh, to at least be able to explain the process of how it works. So the next part after this is to go and get these valves up the top and move the valves up and down in the right timing or when the valve should move and obviously then animate some other animation around that to show when the fuel's going in, the gas is going out and when the spark happens. So there's still a bit to do on that, but I wanted to show you that main part of those mechanics and how you can fairly simply and quickly put that together and have a bit of an experiment. If you'd like to see this in much more detail, let me know and I'm sure I can put a whole course together on putting all of this together and making those mechanics even more accurate. Hope that's been useful to you and I'll talk to you again very soon.